It's a peaceful evening in the sleepy seaside town of Estoril, Portugal, where Spain's royal family lives in exile. Just past 8 p.m., at the family's home, the Villa Giralda, a gunshot shatters the calm. It's a shot that will stun all of Europe and rock the Spanish royal family to its foundation. By morning, the tragic story is headline news. According to the Spanish embassy, the exiled King of Spain's son, 14-year-old Prince Alfonso de Bourbon, is dead from a gunshot wound to the head. The uh, official account was that it was an accident that uh, Alfonso had killed himself by mistake while cleaning his weapon. The family quickly arranges a funeral for the following day. The funeral was very emotive. We took the féretro to the cemetery of Cascais, where he was buried. O sea que hubo una, una... Walking behind the casket, his face a portrait of grief, is the prince's father, Don Juan de Bourbon, heir to the Spanish throne. Obviously, the father is deeply upset. La procesión le iba por dentro y fue terrible, sí, fue una cosa terrible. Behind Don Juan, dressed in the full uniform of a military cadet, is the king's eldest son, 18-year-old Prince Juan Carlos. His expression is vacant. We presume that Juan Carlos is also deeply upset. A veil of silence falls over the death until April 17th. On that day, an Italian newspaper, Il Settimo Giorno, publishes a shocking story. The official statement issued by the Spanish embassy is a lie. Sí, o sea, la prensa italiana lo recogió ya la versión que había sido Juan Carlos, el que había disparado y había matado a, a su hermano de un disparo en la cabeza. The version then became that the two brothers together, they'd been playing with a gun. This had accidentally gone off while in Juan Carlos's hand and that the bullet had hit uh, Alfonso. The response from the Spanish royal family is stunning. Stony silence. Some interpret the lack of response as proof the newspaper is onto something. Others are not so convinced. Yo creo que no era por idea de ocultación. Tenían pena. No se quiere decir con palabras lo que sucedió. It's a shocking allegation, and for those who know the princess, it seems unthinkable. As young children growing up in Portugal in the 1940s, Princess Juan Carlos and Alfonso are reportedly close. La relación entre Juan Carlos y Alfonsito era muy buena. Don Alfonso admiraba muchísimo a su hermano. And Don Juanito was always very patient with his brother. He adored him. But their parents, Don Juan and Dona Maria, treat the boys very differently. As the oldest son and the heir to the throne, Juan Carlos is subjected to strict discipline. Don Juan, como padre, era muy exigente. Se esforzó por educar a su hijo con la severidad que correspondía al que era el heredero de la corona española. At just eight years old, Juan Carlos's parents send him away to a boarding school. By contrast, Alfonso, known as Alfoncito, stays at home in Portugal where he forms a close, affectionate bond with his father. He was terribly bright, fantastic sense of humor, and very, very mischievous. Era el preferido, el preferido, el, el niño bonito de la familia. Eso quizá pues influyó en el carácter de Juan Carlos, de que se veía un poco, no, pues despreciado por sus propios padres en relación con el cariño que demostraban a, al otro hermano. But there was something else straining the relationship between the two princes. A power struggle for the Spanish crown. Few royal families boast a more twisted history than the House of Bourbon, often on rulers of Spain since the year 1700. It's a family of origin, which came to Spain, 
en general fueron malos gobernantes. It's not your typical European monarchy that's been steadily in place for centuries. It's had a fairly unstable existence. Estos reyes borbones pues, han sido gente que se ha dedicado pues, eh, en una condición moral, yo diría, baja. ¿no? Son, han sido mujeriegos, han sido dados a la bebida y ab abandonaban totalmente pues, eso, el, el regir de una manera eh, adecuada a la nación. En 1931, Juan Carlos' grandfather, King Alfonso XIII, flee Spain after elections bring anti-royalist lawmakers to power. El rey Alfonso XIII yo creo que tuvo la prudencia de que no se derramase por su causa ni una gota de sangre y decidió abandonar, abandonar el país. Alfonso insists he will return to the throne that he says still belongs to him. But only 10 years later, Alfonso XIII is dead. His dream of returning to Spain as king falls to his son, Don Juan, and his grandsons, Juan Carlos and the doomed Alfonsito. By the 1940s, Don Juan, heir to the Spanish throne, is married to Maria de las Mercedes and living the bizarre but luxurious life of an exiled future king at the Villa Giralda in Estoril, Portugal. Villa Giralda era una casa muy grande. The rooms are filled by the voices of their children, two daughters, Pilar and Margarita, and two sons, Juan Carlos and Alfonso. The family life in Villa Giralda is a happy one, but Don Juan is keenly unhappy with his exile. They were supported by a series of Spanish noble families, and Don Juan felt very badly about this. He felt it was humiliating. Don Juan yearns to return to Spain and his throne, a goal he passes down to Juan Carlos and the beloved Alfonsito, both pawns in a power struggle for a throne that barely existed. In 1936, five years after Juan Carlos' grandfather fled the country, General Francisco Franco seizes control of Spain. Decía que era monárquico, no era nada. Franco era franquista. Franco es un hombre militar. Quiere que las cosas sean ordenadas. No quiere ni experimentos con ideas extrañas y democráticas. Franco asume el rol de dictador absoluto en 1939. Y le dice a la gente que lo gobernará hasta que el país esté estable. Y luego restaura al rey al trono. But Don Juan wants to gain power as soon as possible. Quería que Franco le nombrara el rey, claro, que, que, y Franco se retirara, ¿no? Eso Franco no estaba por esa labor. Don Juan es como ese equipo de fútbol que pierde por 12 goles y cree que va a ganar. For Don Juan to win and assume the throne, he would need a huge game changer. And in 1948, he found one. Franco and Don Juan meet on Franco's yacht, the Azor. The topic, 10-year-old prince Juan Carlos. Ahí llegaron al acuerdo de que él viniera a estudiar a España. Franco le dije, si no viene a España, que elegiría otra vía monárquica. Franco has no son of his own, but with Juan Carlos, he gets a surrogate. It's a simple deal. Franco controls the boy's education in exchange for a promise to one day restore Don Juan's family to the throne. Don Juan had no other option but to hand his son over to Franco. That was the only route available to him. Could this be the beginning of a relationship that would somehow lead, just eight years later, to the death of young Alfonsito? Eight years before Alfonso's death, Don Juan sends his eldest son, Juan Carlos, to a country he's never seen, Spain. The young prince travels to his family's former palace in Madrid. El Pardo, now occupied by the prince's new benefactor, General Franco. 
It is the beginning of a momentous relationship between the dictator and the royal prince. Franco, pues, lo vio como un niño, como un chico, como un joven, un poco ahí solo. Eh, tenía su servicio de información y le decían que era un chico deprimido, que, que estaba triste, que la familia no le hacía mucho caso. Entonces, él, un poco como si lo hubiera adoptado, ¿no? Eventually, Franco decides he will restore the monarchy, but instead of making Don Juan king, he decides to give the crown to his protege, Juan Carlos, when he's ready. Juan Carlos is being groomed, being prepared to become the head of state, to become Franco's successor. For the next eight years, Juan Carlos is educated at military schools chosen by the dictator. By 1956, Juan Carlos, a cadet at Zaragoza Military Academy, is home in Estoril for a rare visit to celebrate Easter holidays with his family. Era un jueves santo. Se celebraban los santos oficios entonces en la iglesia. Fueron a la iglesia. When they return to Villa Geralda, the family settles downstairs. But Juan Carlos and Alfonsito go upstairs to the second floor drawing room to amuse themselves. Suddenly, a blast jolts the group. According to the boy's mother, Juan Carlos then comes downstairs with tragic news. Subió su padre corriendo, y lo que se encontró allí pues fue el infante Alfonso, este chico de 14 años en, la, en el suelo. Llamaron al doctor Pet. But it is too late. Alfonsito dies in his father's arms. Don Juan covers his dead son's body with the Spanish flag. This was the most terrible thing for the family, and especially for Juan Carlos, because he adored his brother. Pero lo que sí es curioso y eso lo han recogido muchos historiadores y es muy determinante es la frase, la pregunta más bien que le hizo su padre a Juan Carlos. The question he asks his son in front of one of Alfonsito's friends: "Swear to me you didn't do this on purpose." The Spanish embassy releases a statement the following day, but when they do, the name Juan Carlos does not appear. Es una nota muy breve en donde dice que cuando estaba jugando con la pistola, Alfonsito se le disparó y le dio en el cráneo. No fue a la casa con el con el cadáver allí no fue ni la policía judicial a primer un atestado ni los jueces se tapó todo enseguida. Nadie intentó averiguar y si algo lo intentó tampoco lo hubiera conseguido porque nadie hablaba. But some actions may speak louder than words. According to Don Juan's biographer, on the day of his son's funeral, Don Juan hurls the gun that killed the boy into the sea. And within a day, Juan Carlos, the only witness, is gone too sent back to military school in Spain. Un avión español, pues eso, cogió al Alfon a Juan Carlos y lo llevó rápidamente a la a la academia otra vez, no testificó ante la policía ni ante los jueces. But rumors circulate that Juan Carlos was the one who pulled the trigger. The only witness is out of reach and the family silent except for one member, Don Juan's brother, Juan Carlos's uncle, Don Jaime. Su tío, don Jaime, dijo que tenía que haberse una investigación, que tenía que haber hecho la autopsia al cadáver. In a letter reproduced by the press, Jaime states plainly, I cannot accept that someone who is incapable of accepting his own responsibilities should aspire to the throne of Spain. But nothing happens in response to don Jaime's letter. No hubo ninguna investigación, no se hizo autopsia. Some people find the Spanish embassy's statement issued after Alfonso's death, which makes no mention of Juan Carlos, highly suspicious. Why? Partly because the ambassador of Spain is none other than the brother of General Francisco Franco. There is speculation. Could the Spanish dictator be somehow involved in a royal cover-up? General Franco has many reasons for covering up the truth of the events at Villa Giralda. 
Franco sees Juan Carlos as the heir. Who's that? Well, his heir. And it doesn't look good for the heir to have killed his brother. As Franco once said, people do not like princes who are out of luck. According to Inglés, Franco decides to take action. What he can't consent is that the one who is the heir will be involved in the death of his brother. Y entonces lo que hace es da órdenes a la embajada española en Lisboa para que emita una nota, una nota totalmente falsa. Y además no involucra para nada a Juan Carlos. But there is another possible reason why Franco might have ordered a cover-up. Murder. The behavior of the royal family after the tragedy has struck people as suspicious for years. But in 2008, interest in the case intensifies when retired army colonel Amadeo Inglés makes a shocking allegation. In his book, Juan Carlos I, The Last Bourbon, Lies of the Spanish Monarchy, Amadeo Inglés claims the death of Alfonsito was far from accidental. He permitted to reject one after another the hypothesis that the own family of Juan Carlos tejió to say that that was an accident. In the years since Alfonso's death, two theories have emerged. According to the first theory, at the time of the shooting, the boys are alone, the door is closed, and there's a small caliber gun. This theory is based on what Juan Carlos allegedly told his school friend, Bernardo Arnoso. La pistola la tenía Juan Carlos en la mano. Tenía una bala en la recámara. Creían que no tenía bala. Y se disparó. Since Juan Carlos was a student in military school, learning to handle guns, Inglés finds this idea far-fetched. An alumno of an academy, but who had experience with all types of arms. When he shoots a pistol, he knows perfectly if there is a bullet in the camera. Obviously, as someone who had been through the military academy, Juan Carlos is someone who was familiar with with guns. But accidents do happen. The second theory reportedly told by the brother's sister, Pilar, has Alfonsito leaving the room to get a snack. When he went to his apartment, which was in the piso alto, pues Don Juan Carlos was with the pistol and with the door that opens and doesn't open. So Alfonsito bangs into the door, knocking Juan Carlos' arm and causing the gun to fire, accidentally killing Alfonso. But in this case, the actual trajectory of the bullet would seem to contradict this version of events. Despite the lack of autopsy results, sources close to the family say the bullet hit Alfonso's head in a very specific place. For Inglés, the precise trajectory of the bullet up through Alfonso's nose into his brain makes the bumped arm theory highly unlikely. Son cosas increíbles, porque le dan el brazo y entonces es muy difícil que una bala sola busca la fosa nasal. Para entrar por la fosa nasal tiene que ser disparada de un ángulo desde muy abajo, ¿no? Para que penetre. It's that low angle that Inglés finds so incriminating. Una de las cosas que más me han hecho a mí sospechar de que aquello podía haber sido un homicidio es que la bala, ella solita buscó las fosas nasales y para penetrar en el cerebro, pues eso me cuesta mucho trabajo de creer en un accidente, ¿no? But why would Juan Carlos, the heir to the throne, want to kill his younger brother? One possible motive, a power struggle for the throne. Don Juan knew that his son and Franco were getting too close, that Franco was grooming the boy in his image. La relación entre Franco y Juan Carlos era íntima. Juan Carlos era un hombre que se echó siempre en sus brazos, que en fin lo obedecía en todo, que lo visitaba continuamente en su palacio. Inglés claims Don Juan did not like the intimacy between his son and the dictator, and as Juan Carlos and Franco got closer, Don Juan believed he had lost control of Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos lo habían convencido de que la única fórmula que había de restauración de la monarquía era entenderse con Franco convertirse en sucesor de Franco y esa fue parte de la lucha política interna entre el padre y el hijo. Don Juan había pensado, como es cierto, que según él le traicionaba con Franco, muy enfadado con Juan Carlos. 
Not only that, he fears that Franco will usurp his claim to the throne entirely and make his son Juan Carlos king instead of him. According to Inglés, Don Juan was about to play the only card he had left. Because he feared that Franco would give the crown to Juan Carlos and not him, he would choose his youngest son, Alfonsito, not Juan Carlos, to succeed him as king. I was thinking seriously to give the rights to Juan Carlos and give the rights to Alfonso. Franco bugged Don Juan's homes, so he could have known what Don Juan was considering. Franco grababa todo, ¿no? Todo lo que hablaba Don Juan, incluso se habla también de que estaban también pinchados. No es de extrañar que Juan Carlos le llegara la noticia, ¿no? Inglés claims that Juan Carlos, loyal to Franco, shot his younger brother to secure his hold on the throne. Yo creo que esa hipótesis podría explicar que fue una cosa premeditada. It's a theory bolstered by Franco's cover-up, Don Jaime's pleas for an investigation, and a rumor that it was Franco himself who gave Juan Carlos the gun in the first place. According to Inglés, the most telling evidence is Don Juan's chilling plea to Juan Carlos right after the shooting. Swear to me, you didn't do this on purpose. Un padre que conoce a los dos, son sus hijos, y cuando lo que acaba de ocurrir, cuando pregunta a su hijo, admite que su hijo ha podido matar a su hermano de una manera premeditada. Despite all the doubts, Juan Carlos is never questioned in the death of his brother, and the transition of power follows Franco's grand plan. After 38 years as dictator, Franco finally proclaims that Prince Juan Carlos, and not his father, will succeed him as ruler of Spain after his death. Spain has a unique situation to have a king who is appointed to his position by a dictator. It's a bizarre situation. Six years later, in 1975, Franco dies. For the first time since 1931, a Bourbon king becomes ruler of Spain. For 52 years, the death of Prince Alfonso of Spain has been shrouded in mystery. Over time, a few have questioned why an official investigation was never done. Many believe it was to protect his brother, King Juan Carlos, but silence prevails until 2008. That's when retired army colonel Amadeo Inglés, who believes Juan Carlos may have intentionally killed his brother, calls for a new investigation into Alfonso's death. Pero que yo de mis investigaciones, eh, bueno, pues colegía que podía ser un, un asesinato premeditado, y entonces yo le pedí al fiscal general de Portugal que abriera investigaciones Yo creo que es muy importante saber si un rey o un jefe de estado pues, ha sido un, un asesino o no ha sido asesino. Inglés does not get the response he is hoping for. Few people believe his allegations, including the attorney general. El fiscal general de Portugal mandó una nota diciendo que, lo, que archivaba el caso, ¿no? Que no encontraba, que no encontraba indicios, que, que había pasado mucho tiempo. And since an autopsy was never performed, Inglés's assumption that the fatal shot must have been fired intentionally from a low angle was never proven. Inglés's history also makes him less than credible. He's a retired colonel who has long opposed the monarchy. His critics say that Inglés is only bringing up the death of Alfonso to discredit the king. Don Jaime's motives for accusing his nephew, Juan Carlos, of something sinister are equally suspect. Don Jaime always wanted to be king of Spain and should have been. He was Don Juan's older brother, but he was also deaf, and his father decided to skip him and make Don Juan the heir instead. Jaime got over it, and by discrediting Juan Carlos, he believed he could reclaim the crown he thinks he deserves. Moreover, many find it hard to believe Juan Carlos could have committed murder given his behavior once he became king. 
I think there are many kinds of expectations when Juan Carlos took over. Juan Carlos is there because Franco has chosen him. The reasonable thing to assume is that there will be some kind of continuity. Most Spaniards expected the new king to be a mini Franco, but what they got was very different. Far from continuing Franco's policies, Juan Carlos set about dismantling them. He reinstated a constitutional monarchy and took bold steps to move Spain towards a democracy. Ultimately, Juan Carlos has transferred much of his power as king to a democratic government. As a result, today he is widely considered the Spanish-speaking world's most popular ruler. Sobre todo lo que me parece que es que ha rendido un gran servicio al bien común de los españoles. He could have gone either way, and it went the way that it did, down the path of democracy. Because Juan Carlos has not followed Franco's ways, it's hard for many to believe in Glace's theory that the young prince could have ever been brainwashed by Franco into killing his brother. Sí, mire, con cualquier especulación que se haga sobre eso, es una tropelía. Fue un accidente lamentable, lamentabilísimo, que puede ocurrir en cualquier familia. Furthermore, Alfonso was Juan Carlos' younger brother, behind him in the order of succession, not ahead. If it had been al revés, si Don Alfonso llega a matar a su hermano Don Juan Carlos, hubiera pasado de ser un infante a ser el príncipe de Asturias y el heredero de la corona. La especulación hubiera podido tener algún sentido. Es una cosa evidente lo que ocurrió. Lo único que pasó es que Don Juan Carlos se quedó sin hermano. En fin, fue una desgracia terrible para Don Juan Carlos. Inglés's book is widely dismissed when it is released. But although most do not believe his theory that Juan Carlos murdered Alfonso, there is no question that the death had a lasting effect on the king. There's a theory that uh, there's an aura of sadness around Juan Carlos, and that this is an event that marks him for the rest of his life. Marcó mucho a Don Juan Carlos porque el ver a su hermano muerto, pues le quitó la alegría de vivir. Esa la perdió y la verdad es que no la recuperó nunca. Don Juan. Thirty-six years after the shooting and seventeen years after he assumed the throne, King Juan Carlos made his first and only public gesture towards his brother. Don Juan se sintió enfermo de muerte, pues quiso traer a su hijo a España y que le enterrasen en el panteón de infantes. Y Don Juan Carlos dijo que sí y se trajo aquí Don Alfonso. The family ceremony in a royal crypt at El Escorial near Madrid was private. Don Juan died just five months later. With his death, so goes his knowledge of what happened that day and what he might have been trying to silence. I think lots of Spaniards probably don't even know that Juan Carlos might be responsible for his brother's death. The only person who knows what happened is King Juan Carlos himself. I don't think we will ever know the full details of what happened between Juan Carlos and Alfonso in that room in, in Estoril. I think it's something that Juan Carlos will take to the grave with him. His silence ensures that a royal death will likely remain wrapped in mystery. <laughs>